Eye specialists from New Zealand are working through a number of patients with eye conditions and patients are delighted they arrived to assist deliver a much needed service. According to eye specialists Dr. Sarah Welsh and Dr. Penny McCallum, there are not as many patients with serious eye problems this visit. It's actually been really good. This is our second trip to Nui. We came about, um, in September of 2009 and I think we were a little bit busier there. We did more then. We did more operations at that time. We did um, about 15 or 20 operations last time and this time we will have done five or six in total and of that probably just two or three cataracts. So not quite as busy from that point of view and partly it's because we've been before so we knew how the setup works. And it's really nice we've come back and met old friends who you know, work at the hospital and seen people that we saw before and operated on before. So it's been really nice. Yeah. Um, and Penny, now I guess the numbers have, have dropped since the last time that you were here. I mean, in, in the ones that you've done the um, uh, operations on. Um, but having a look at uh, the referrals to New Zealand, do you think there are more people that left for for New Zealand? Or is it just because um, you already seen some and, and attended to them last time? I think there was quite a backlog of people last time because they hadn't had anyone come to do eye surgery here for several years before we came so there were quite a few people who'd been waiting a long time. Um, so this time it's not such a long period. Uh, so I mean, we have a lot of people, we're probably going to see a total of about 100 people in the clinic but of those there is a smaller number who need, who need surgery. And I suppose there are some things that we can't do here. We can do certain operations, but some things we don't have the right equipment or the right expertise. So there are a few people we need to send to New Zealand for, uh, for further treatment. And so far I think we have five or six people this week who mm -hmm. are going to be going um, back home, which is I think a similar number to the number that we referred back to New Zealand last time as well. Mm -hmm. One of the key problems they say are patients with diabetes. We see a lot of people here with diabetes mm -hmm. and generally I'm very impressed at how people um, seem to be managing their diabetes, keeping their sugars down and their blood pressure and their cholesterol down, which is the most important thing. And they don't have many problems with their eyes, but we've got two people who've got bad problems with their eyes from the diabetes and we have to send them back to New Zealand for treatment, mm -hmm. for laser treatment. Um, and for me... Diabetes is the most serious thing because if they don't get treatment and if it keeps on going, then there's nothing we can do. And, and back home, it's very depressing because we see lots of people who've gone blind from the diabetes. So mm -hmm. here, the diabetes actually in Nui seems to be under, you know, it's not fantastic control, but people seem to be aware that they have to look after themselves. And, you know, that's really important. So how important do you think it is for people to, to uh, be made aware of, you know, the, the two that are related? Well, I think it's very important because, unfortunately, with diabetes, by the time it gets to the stage where your vision is actually affected by it, it's actually almost too late. It's quite, you know, quite advanced, and the treatment is less effective. So that's why we need to see them regularly to, to check their eyes before it gets too bad, and why the control needs to be really good uh, to prevent it from getting to the stage where it's too late. But certainly, I mean, you know, we do. It's not that uncommon to still see people actually going completely blind from diabetes uh, or losing perhaps the central vision, the detail vision, which can be you know, quite, quite difficult to manage without. Mm -hmm. So it is a pretty serious problem. We've been quite impressed with the, um, I think there's a good service here in the hospital with the, the local doctors managing the diabetes and I think patients have good access to, to care for, for that. Um, but obviously um, with, the, with the eyes it's only uh, when you can examine the back of the eyes and uh, that we can pick up these changes. So I think you know, it's important they have their control and also that they come for their eye checks. Mm -hmm. The simple things that people can do to care for their eyes um, if they have diabetes, can control their sugar, and make sure their blood pressure is under control, and make sure their cholesterol is under control. If you don't have diabetes, wearing sunglasses is a good idea because that protects the eyes and stops pterygium from growing. And, um, and I think the final thing is when you have the opportunity, get your eyes checked because if there's a problem, sometimes there's hidden problems in the eyes that you're not aware of and they can be treated, but unless unless you get them checked, you don't know about it. So they're the three things. You know, look after your general health and um, get your eyes checked. Five patients have been referred to New Zealand and Dr McCullum said this is due to specialised equipment and services not available on the island.
New Zealand's Auditor General arrived on the island last Friday with two complete reports of New US finances between the years of 2007 and 2008. Questions were previously asked in assembly of why the reports are behind a few years. From the contents of the 2007-2008 reports, some inconclusive submissions from New US operations could have a major part in the late compilations of the reports as some transactions were not accounted for. However, not all is lost as the Auditor General's report commends NUI for the new infrastructure planning system for asset management in place in 2010 for future benefits. As with the public's anticipation of the report, the Auditor General's aim is to make assurance that the public sector organisations are operating and accounting for their performances as well as local governments and operations and activities the entities they control implement. We'll bring you more on this story in our future news bulletin. An assumption that a shortage of beer on the island will not force any business to suffer, says one retailer, who is amazed that government department responsible for stocking their liquor outlet decided to air freight a supply of beer. The air freight consignment, which cost $5 a can, sits at the bond store as most beer patrons shift to lesser cost alcohol. One liquor supplier said Newer has had the same issues with shortage of beer in the past, but retailers waited out for the boat, no harm done. But to air freight beer, not favoured by locals either, is a waste of money. However, one local resident has applauded the government's initiative, saying it might be a deterrent for young people if alcohol cost is high, and that can only be good for them and the communities. This afternoon, we received notice that the bond store is now functioning under the Premier's department, and that the officer responsible for the bond store will assist with provision of information required for the ordering of stock. It is the intention of government to better the management of the bond store and other trading services of government. There is no intention at the moment to privatise the bond store, but to improve services for all customers. New sporting body NISCA, or New Island Sports and Commonwealth Games Executive Committee, took initiative to contribute to the Christchurch earthquake by rallying sports codes under the main body Nisanog to raise $2,000 towards the tragedy that killed many. President of New Island Sports and Commonwealth Games Association said the money raised was handed over to New Zealand High Commissioner, His Excellency Mike Blumsky, who was in the funds through to the New Zealand Prime Minister's office. His Excellency Mike Blumsky said he is thankful to the sporting community of Niue for the great contribution that and assured that the Committee of the Great Appreciation from the Christchurch community for the much-needed contribution. Ten contributing codes and families contributed to fundraise with NISCA, topping up $500 to reach $2,000. President Des Hipper said he and the Executive Committee wish to thank all the codes that contributed, Tamamana Sports, Cricket Niwe, Newer Shooting, Newer Golf and Sports, Newer Island Touch, Newer Rugby Union, Newer Athletics, Tano's Gym, Speedo's Gym, President of NISCA and Family, as well as NISCA. The President say they will continue to pray for the people of Christchurch. And to end our news bulletin for tonight, yesterday Newer High School held their annual sports day. As with previous years, four schoolhouse colours compete for the championship. Title Moya in black and red, Langakale in fluorescent green, Poor in blue, and Kiato in black and yellow. The day started with a match pass with only one team performing in front of the dignitaries, Moya. However, the standings for the marching Poor in fourth place, Langakale in third place, Moya in second, and Kiato in first place. The shift in dynamics yesterday saw many youngsters improve on previous years, changing Kiato House overall results. With the, new, with the year seven newcomers, it was a pleasant change to take note of some of the new speedsters. As most of the track events took place on Friday, only the 100-200 metre sprints were held, as well as the relay, the heptathlon, D100 
decathlon and the field events. The provisional rankings after yesterday's competition see Kiato in first place, second to poor, third Langakali and fourth Moya. Unfortunately, the overall scores have not been finalised before this news item came to air. That's our news bulletin for tonight. Good evening. Mm -hmm.